Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Class. Hey, so glad you're with me this morning. And I uh, hope you have your coffee with you and we're ready to go here, but we're going to need iced coffee just a little bit later on today, it looks like. So uh, we are staying down the line of character traits of Jesus. We're going to be talking about loving today. Loving. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is love, but not the way most people really think of God, and not really the way that most people really think about love. I kind of reminded of a song goes way back, it definitely dates me. 1967, I had to look it up. And uh, for the Beatles, and it was, you know, the repeated over and over, love, 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 love. And then the, the part that I always remember in the back of my head that you just can't seem to get out of it is, all you need is love, da, 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 da. And it repeats it over and over, all you need is love. It certainly describes the 1960s, I think. Um, and love's a wonderful thing. I don't know what we would do without it, but... Today, people, they, they, they think of love, and they, they think about God, and they think, hey, the only thing God is, is love. And he is love. But what kind of love? If we, if we look at it, at 1 John, the fourth chapter in verse 8, it says, God is love. Now, he's certainly not that kind of gushy love of a romance, of a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a wife. Certainly not a, a brotherly kindness type of love. That's not it. It is the love of a father. It's more than I love you for your faults. It's more than I love you and I know you've got faults, but you're okay. But rather, I love you in spite of all of your faults. In fact, it can be summed up like this. God loves and receives us, but loves us too much to let us stay there. Because that's not where we're supposed to be. If we look at Romans, the fifth chapter, let's look at that just real quick. At Romans, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through, I think it's 10 or 11. I've got 10, I believe I've got through here. And it says, for when we were yet Without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by his death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. See, there's a problem. We're separated from God. And we're separated from God by our sin. We see that in Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us, we, we can't meet God's expectation. We can't meet God's holiness. And the punishment for sin, it's death. If we look a little further over into Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. That's a separation from God. But then he goes in and he says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when people sin, when I sin, when you sin, we take and we earn the pay for sin. And, and the pay for sin is death. But God gives his people a free gift. A, th a free gift of this eternal life. And it's all through Jesus And the thing is that so many different religions, they have things that you work at. You can't work for this. You can't do anything about it. You can't do anything to gain it. 
yet we're helpless in this state of sin. In Psalms, the, the 53rd division, verses 2 and 3, it says, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them is, is gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. No, not one. Not one of us. We're all dirty with our sins. We all have these, we're, it's like we have these blood stained rags. Our sins have, have carried us, you know, to a situation here that that we can't recover from. Isaiah, the 60, 64th uh, chapter, it says, But we were all as, un, as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. This filthy rags, it's referring to these putrid rags that you might pull off of a wound. I work with wounds a lot. And it, it might be this gauze that comes out of a person because they've got some sort of a sore. And it's ugly and it stinks. And it's these filthy rags. That's what he's referring to here. It's like filthy rags. And it's, then it goes on, it says, and we all do fade as a leaf. See, you're not saved by the things you can do. Or the things you've done. It says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, he says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So God took some action here for us. God loved us. We see that in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He goes on, and I want to read on beyond that. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this <clears throat> is the condemnation of light to come to the world and men love darkness rather than life because their deeds are evil. And then verse 20, For every one that doth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So God demonstrated his love toward us. He sent his son. He sent its son for us. If we look in, in Romans 5.8, he says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's pretty rough, isn't it? When we still hated God, he took and he sent redemption for us. See, God requires sinless righteousness, and we can't achieve that. In 1 John 4, 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We have to instill as much of this love as we can into our lives. The same love that God took and put towards us. If we look into 1 John, the fourth chapter, And I'm going to catch verses 9, 10, 11 here. It says, In this was ma manifested, or in this was made known the love of God toward us. How did we know that God loved us? He says, Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a perpetuation. For our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. He calls us to love also, doesn't he? 
This word propitiation, it means to satisfy the wrath of God against sin, to turn away God's wrath, to take and offer a sacrifice. And we couldn't do that. We had no perfect sacrifice. So God sent his son as a replacement for that. So Jesus sees not just simply the perpetuation for it. He is the, notice, the perpetuation in, in verse 10. He's not just a perpetuation. It couldn't be just anyone. He's the only one that could do it. And that's something that it's extremely important that we understand. So, what's our response in all of this? If we look in Acts 2.38, very, very well-known verse, Acts 2.38-2.39, our response has to be faith. It has to be accepting Christ as our personal Savior. God says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I'll come in, I'll sup with him, and he with me. But in Acts 2.38 it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the redemption, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is upon you, and to your children, and to all that are at, afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Notice Peter says, repent, repent. That's a changing of your direction. It's not just saying, I'm sorry. It's a, it, it is saying, I'm sorry, but it's a changing of direction. The other thing is, it's not just a once and done thing. Now you say, what do you mean? It, you're going to be saved over and over. No, you're not. But I do mean this. It's talking about long-term obedience. It's living our life for him. Ongoing, living the way he wants us to live. In, in John, the 14th chapter, verse 15, he says... If you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. So if we love God, we're going to do what he's told us to do. If we look in 1 John, the 5th chapter, verse 3, he says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome. So for those who love God for those who the Lord loves we note here something that the fact is that he will discipline us along the way he's going to direct us he's going to guide us and guide our ways here we see that over in the book of Hebrews but the part that I just want us to catch here before I kind of finish it up right here. And maybe the question I really need to ask is this. Have you fully embraced God's love? Have you fully embraced this love? Because remember, God is love and he expects us to love also. Hey, this is Alan. I will catch up with you a little bit later.